we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty Father, at this dawn, may my help come upon me. May God's, may the Father's promise bring about miracles. As much as we love, we receive. As much as we love, we receive wealth. May our desires be fulfilled within the word. May we realize what it is that I'm doing wrong. May we confess. And today, may miraculous workings happen. May we be witnesses of the word. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Our ancestors sins, my sins. That's why I'm suffering. You now know this, don't you? So who is it that we confess our ancestors' sins to? Do you truly know Jehovah to do it to him? So who do I confess my sins to? Why is it that God says your ancestors' sins to Jehovah, my sins to the Lord? So who is the Lord? Who is Jehovah? This dawn, who helps us? So those those people who are not answering, you know, have you forgotten? That's fine. Psalm chapter 46, verse 5. We have to receive help at dawn. But when I see, you know what the present reality is in society? A hundred, a thousand years ago, they're not the same problems as now. If there's a little bit of sin, the disasters that come a little. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 21. It happens according. So, Back then, there were thousands who died in one go. Back then, God, even the uh, the Bible records that thousands would die in a plague, a pestilence. Numbers chapter 14. So these archaeologists are like, oh, look, they built up all these stones. Where are they now? Well, if God killed them with pestilence, you know, they disappear. As you live, no matter how much you learn in the world, it is elementary. But those people who are tied up to that, they're so pitiful. In those peop- in those families, there are always people who turn crazy. Why? If you don't do four-step repentance completely, you know, I'm rebuking you. That is love. Jesus, who is love, his first words were to repent. Matthew chapter 4, verse 6, 17. Why? When you repent, the demons that torment you, they depart. So if you repent and the demons depart, you don't become simple. So you can discern between the true and the fake sermons. When you listen to the fake sermons, that's when you become crazy. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 25. So someone who is crazy, you go to a church like that. Why is it that that church keeps getting crazy people? Because if you don't repent, you cannot discern between true and fake sermons. You listen to anything and you you turn crazy. So... One part of that craziness is to have stroke and to have dementia. More and more. You know, two, three years ago, from two, three years ago, Korea, their divorce has increased seven times. Who is it that likes divorce? You know, if God says he hates divorce, Malachi chapter, Malachi chapter 2. You know, people, they divorce because, you know, they have no other choice. It's, you know... It's a matter of death. So the scariest torture in this world is water torture. I'm afraid to say the verse. So it's in Proverbs chapter 19. I'm not going to say. But worse than that, more torturous than that is to have a bad spouse relationship. So so your worst enemy is your family. Matthew chapter 10 verse 36. But with forced repentance, this disappears. So because you don't do what is good, you know, what you learnt 10 years ago. These days, 10 years of study is nothing. Even just, you know, six years of elementary school and then after that, you know. So our ancestors, they seem smart, but they're nothing. But when we learn, what we learn in high school, now they're learning in elementary school. Why? Because it's it's all nothing. So you learn that much, but... Why is it doesn't doesn't work? If you could become a man because of studies, then already a dog or a monkey would be a man. 
But this head learning, that's of the beast. That's not how you become a man. So those people who boast about what they learn with their head, you see their families com becoming a complete mess. We see this in history. We see this in our present in our present times. So in the future, who can say, oh, I'm not going to get dementia? Who? Who can say that when I get old, I'm not going to turn crazy? So if I become crazy, my children become even more crazy. But if I become right, it's either your your children, a thousand generations, they receive blessings, or three and four generations of ruin. But we've come to do well. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5 to 6. So for the whole week, I repent about the word, God's word that I haven't obeyed. You know, I should I should be taking a sabbatical rest. But for 20 years, I've just done it without resting. Even that is disobedience. Some people say, if you preach a sermon and you die during that, that's a blessing. But outside of Christ, even that's fake. Even if you lay hands, that's fake. Even if you fast, that's fake. Inside of Christ, the mystery of God, forced at repentance, even if, you're, if you die on the cross, that's happiness, that's blessings, that's glory. So if you can't even discern that, If you don't, if I don't tell you to repent, I'll talk about some scholar. What What is it to boast about where you may do well now, but in a little while you don't do well? Oh, this person, they were a beggar and then they had this, you know, sweet candy business and now they're doing well and you're like, wow. What? Well, that's not doing well. You know, in at the moment, The biggest problem is families breaking up, the children suffering, that unhappiness. And then as you get old, what do people get? You know, just because you live a long life, what's the point of that if you just suffer? You get dementia and, and you're out of your mind. And then you make your children crazy. They become disobedient. So then they say, oh, children, they're just evil. You know, who is it that's told them all over the world? Because children are a headache. People are only just having one child. But does that work? Even having one child, you still still doesn't, you can't become a man. So God says, it doesn't matter if you have a lot of children or just one child, you can do well. So that's the blessing we've come to receive. Even though I can't come daily, I still continue to repent all the time. And I receive the sermon throughout the week. And I at least receive... 50 to 100 verses. What do, you, what do you think I do with that? So what's the difference between Jehovah and the Lord? If you read Genesis chapter 1, it's God. Chapter 2, it's Jehovah God. Chapter 3, it's Jehovah God. Chapter 4, it's the Lord. But to not even know this, and you say you're reading the Bible. But, you know, I don't have time to do all these sermons. And I see how, you know, these people, they have... You know, they have all these problems. Their nose is dripping, and it's dripping into their food. So we have to do what's urgent, which is to wipe that nose. So that's what we're going to do this dawn. Even Jesus, when he came to this earth, that's what he did. Those who were starving, he fed them, the 5,000. He didn't say, let's go to heaven while you starve. Your present problems, if you have disease, he healed that. So what is urgent for you now? Disease, the demons in your family, to cast them out. Let's first start by receiving answers to fix our destiny. We have to receive this help. Psalms chapter 32, uh, 46 verse 5, let's read it. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. Amen. So here it says God and God and God. But if you want to understand this, Jehovah God, Lord, you have to know that relationship. The Lord, if you don't repent of your sins and your ancestors' sins and you're not godly, you cannot meet the Lord. But these fakes who don't repent of their ancestors' sin, sins and they say they're going to heaven, what kind of lie is that? Why is it that we're cursed? Because we say, let's repent of our ancestors' sins, and they say we're some, we're, we're some strange religion, same strange denomination. But the Bible says, if you don't repent of your ancestors' sins, you cannot meet the Lord, you cannot become godly. Psalms chapter 32, verse 5 and 6. So who is God? God is almighty. G Genesis chapter 17, he is almighty. 
So even if your child is crazy, even if you have, you know, even if you're senile, even even if you you have a stroke, even if you can't walk since you were born, God says you, He will help you. Why is it that you can't receive? So the pastor in front, if he himself can't do well, so who is a pastor? He's a witness. Luke chapter 24, verse 48. He has to preach what he himself has has done. But the fake is someone who he himself hasn't done it, and yet he tells others. So I have to become a witness. What are the principles and practices of Eastern medicine? It's to say, look, if you do this, this is what happens. So it's to be a witness. If you eat a puffer fish, their eggs, you'll die. So they say, don't eat this. That's a witness. You know, if you eat wild ginseng, it's good for you. So they say, eat this. That's a witness. So you've got to go where someone's a witness. If someone's not doing well at all, why, why go to someone who's lying? So who is it that helps at this time? So if you want to receive that help, who do you receive it by? Where is God? He's inside a four-step repentance. Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. But to not know Christ and say you're going to heaven. To not know Christ and say you, you say you believe in Jesus. 100% that's a lie. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Let's find it. So this storm, we have to do well. We have to do well before we leave. This is so good. Those who are elderly, you know, I'm confident because Moses, he did it from 80 to 120. But it wasn't Moses who did it. That's me. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 3. So you can do well, I can do well. How exciting is this? Whether I walk on the street, wherever I go, if I see someone sick, I say what I say. You know, if I say to them, do you want to believe in God? They can't understand. They hate God the most. They act as if they like him, but they hate him. That's not what I say. John chapter 3, verse 19 to 21. That's what it says. So those who go to fake churches, those with doctorates, they go to fake churches the most. Why? Because they have demons. They cannot understand. Where someone says true words, they don't want to go there. John chapter 3, verse 19 to 21. Where they say correct words, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 12. Where there are words of wisdom, they don't want to go there. That's what God has said. So why is it they go inside of Christ, forced their repentance, and then they betray? Why is it they bring suffering upon themselves, their whole life and their children? You know, you betray so well. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 to 9. So when you meet someone, you think, oh, they're not going to betray. No. I said to a deacon yesterday, as soon as you become full and you're going to earn some money, you're going to betray. And they're like, no, I won't. Just because you say I won't, you don't think you will? You have to continue to do four-step repentance. Even Pastor Park, if I don't repent, I start thinking of other things. Even if I don't pray for a day, I'm like, hmm, with the blessings that God has given. You know, I should be a witness. I should go to Switzerland or, you know, live abundantly. And then, and then I'll, I, I can be, I can be a witness and say, God gave me all these blessings after doing his work. But why is it they go, I go to the street and buy a $2 soup, at, you know, and end up building a house for all the people to pray in? If I don't repent, you know, that's what I think. Why am I suffering like this? But that's a demon. There's nothing that is mine. Everything is the Lord's. Romans chapter 14, verse 6 to 8. Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. Let's read it. But emptied himself, taking the form of a bond servant, and being made in the likeness of men. Amen. So who became as a slave like this? So if you read in verse 6, let's read verse 6. So if let's read again. So who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. Amen. So he's the same as God. He's the same as God. And yet, what did he come as? You, If you even have a chance, it's so filthy you can't even look at it. It's because you don't have an opportunity or chance that you're sitting here. You look at those people in our country who are well connected. You know, you pay your taxes. Those people who receive those big wages, 
they end up getting investigated and those people in those high places, they receive all their pay and yet they're so brazen. Why? According to God's word, those who betray Christ are brazen. So those people who don't, you know, who don't have money, they're the ones that get charged and they have to take the fall for things. But these, these people in high places, they're, they're shameless. So who is it that came as a slave? Jesus. We all want to receive power. We don't have, we don't have time, but we still have to do this. When do you receive power? Acts chapter 10, verse 38. It's after you receive the Holy Spirit that you receive power. Who gives it? It's God. So if you don't receive the Holy Spirit, there is no way to receive power. We don't have time. So we're going to talk about power during this revival. There's so much to do. What is it that, that you're not doing well, that your problems aren't being solved? What is it that you're not doing, that you can't be happy, you're suffering? You think that people are living well in society? If you look inside their families, you see if they're living well. Their families are a complete mess. And yet they just live like that. Like dog, pigs. Those people, we say they're respect worthy. You know, these, these public figures, celebrities. You know, you put them in front of others. It just seems like they've done a bit more. You know, if you, learn a, if you learn a lot, you become crazy. It's not that you study that you become crazy. From the beginning, you had demons. That's why you become crazy. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 25. So whichever church, if it doesn't start by making you repent completely, you listen to a fake sermon, you become crazy. You get dementia, you, your children become crazy. You go towards the way where your family becomes a mess where your country doesn't do well. You look at this president. He let these people become state ministers. They've tried their whole lives to get that position. Once they get that position, you know, that, that, that grace that they've received to get into that position, but those people they, he, that he's put in that position, have they made the president's name good or have they brought curses upon him? They all go to prison and they pour poo on him. That's how much the world betrays. So if you help people, they turn evil on you. That's right in, this, in the world where people don't believe Jesus. Psalms 107, someone who doesn't have people benefits. If you scorn God's word, that's what happens. So what is this saying? You believe in Jesus? Jesus came as a slave. So if you're not doing well, you want that problem solved? Why is it that you don't do well? Because you haven't received baptism. So what did Jesus come as? He came as a slave. So it's because this, this isn't happening. You say, yes, I believe in Jesus, but you can't find any slaves, particularly amongst the pastors. Where can you find a slave? They all spend money in order to to get promoted and to get some title. If you make a denomination or a faction, do you follow the truth or not? No, you follow demons. That's what's recorded, and yet people do that. So how wrong are their lives, and yet they don't know? But we can't go that same way of ruin. We have to live. So who is it that came as a slave? Jesus. So it's because you can't receive baptism that your problems are being solved. Who is it that received baptism? Let's find Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. If you don't receive baptism, can you go to heaven or not? If you don't receive baptism, you'll go to hell. Mark chapter 16, verse 16. So when do you receive baptism? After you receive the gift of faith, that's when you're baptized. So it's after Jesus comes to you that you're baptized. So it's after you become a slave that you're baptized. So my family problems, my business problems, my health problems, happiness, salvation, all these things aren't working out. If you're a demon, do you see the Bible properly? Or 
in reverse. Is it me that's first or the country? Demons say it's the country. But God says, it's not the country that's first. You have to become a man. It's when you become a man that you're a patriot. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. You have to first become a man to be patriotism, for there to be a, a nation. In history, why is it countries like Babylon were ruined? Why is it that the Soviet is ruined? It's disappeared. It's these dog pigs who say that they're patriots, that the country disappears. So it's not the country that comes first. When is it that God created a nation first? So because you see the Bible in reverse, and yet you can't discern that it's a fake sermon. Why? Because you have demons inside of you. It's so sad. God says, you have to first become a man. Jesus Christ dying on the cross. What is Christ? It's for your sins to be forgiven. This beast who didn't have faith. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 22, to become a man. Once you become a man, that's faith. After you become a man, that's when you have a family. It's after you become a man, that's when there's a nation. But to not know this and to do things in reverse. These demons, it's pathetic. It's pitiful. But even those people today can do well. Jesus came as a slave. You say you believe in Jesus, but there are no slaves. So how much do you lie? How fake are you? A slave has to do what the master tells them to. Even if you grumble behind his back, you'll be beaten. If you're discovered, you'll be beaten. But God, Psalms 139, he knows all things. You have to become a slave to be baptized. If you're not even a slave, how can you be baptized? You have to have Jesus inside of you, faith, to be baptized. Let's read Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. After being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and lighting on him. Amen. So it says Jesus was baptized. You know, some people say, did, did Jesus have sin? You know, did he? But in 1 Peter chapter 2, all he did was show us an example. If you talk to people like that, you know, when? When can you talk to someone who's like a kindergartner? Someone in preschool, if you say 1 plus 100, even though it's 101, they'll be sitting there trying to count on their fingers up to 100. You know, how can you how can you spend all that time like that? So here, Jesus received baptism. When you receive baptism, what comes upon you? The Holy Spirit that casts out demons. Let's find Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. If you don't receive baptism, even if you have faith, if you don't receive baptism, you're still being a slave to demons. So if you have demons, how can God give you blessings? How can he give you answers? You're still being a slave to demons. You don't have salvation. You're not doing well. That's why you have problems so that you'll realize. When he gives you problems, he doesn't give you other people's problems. It's what you, your answers, the sins that you've committed, he returns them to you. That's what, make, that's what makes you not do well. So he's making you realize. That, so that's why there are some people who don't do well severely. Some people don't do well just a little. It depends on what you've planted. In this world, there are thorns. Do you know how long the biggest thorn is? Have you seen acacia thorns? Do you know how long it is? When I went to Africa... As I went around the world, there were thorns that are bigger than one and a half hand spans. You know, that if you would pierce, it'd come out your back. But in Korea, those people who've only seen a centimeter thorns, that's all they think thorns are. But if your ancestors have p planted something that's one and a half hand spans long, that's what you have to read back. If they only planted a one centimeter, one centimeter one that's what you have to receive back Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 so you have to receive it meekly because that's what you and your ancestors have planted so when you receive when you have problems you have to receive it meekly and be thankful that's when you can change it to miracles to blessings so if it's a hand span of thorns it will change to a hand span of gold it will change to it will change so we have to be baptized for our demons to depart. So that's why Jesus showed this example. So who was Jesus? 
So these pastors who don't have power, these elders, these deacons who they've been here for a long time and they don't have answers and powers. I haven't seen a pastor who is a slave. Even as I'm sitting, repenting, am I a slave? A slave has to give profit to the master. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24. So if you don't give profit to others, you're evil. If you make denominations and you slander others, is that giving profit? So those people who are cursed, Europe, even though they did this for 2,000 years, they've disappeared. And even our country, more and more churches are disappearing. And, but are we going to go that way? What is a church? It's where you and I, our desires are fulfilled. It's where our destiny is fixed. It's where we go to heaven. It's where our children do well. It's where we become patriots. We have to come here. So a true church, they, it's never ruined. 1 John chapter 2, verse 17, that's God's promise. So the head of the church is Christ, the body of the church is Christ. So if the head and body are Christ, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22, 23. So those without forced at repentance, how can that be a church? Because they say such lies. That's why. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. The sermons without Christ, they'll go to hell. That's what God has decided upon. So we've come to receive help from our problems. Almighty God, he helps with everything. That's why he's almighty. So what, what is our desire? What is it that's not working out? Is it things are filthy after getting married? Or is, do you have a problem because you're not getting married? Is it your problem that's the problem? Or n not having a business that's the problem? Or is it having a business that's a problem? You know, is it that you're not happy? Is it that your children are disobedient? Whatever problem, at this time, Almighty God will help you. But why is it that he can't help you? If you want to meet God, where is God? Inside of four-step repentance, Christ. So he's inside of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. So if you do four-step repentance, and if, he's in, if God is inside of Christ, if you go inside of Christ, do you meet God straight away? Well, your father's at home. Just because you're at the gate, will you meet your father? Your father could be inside his room, so you have to go all the way inside the room. So if you're not doing well, your children aren't doing well, your business isn't doing well, you still haven't met God. So without Christ, is there a way to go, go to God or not? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, Without Christ, there is no way to get to God. You may attend church just because you're a pastor. You can't meet God. Even if you've lived your whole life for generations, you can't meet God. You have to go inside of Christ. That's the mystery of God, four-step repentance. So if you go inside of Christ, Christ, he makes our double heart one, one heart. He makes that double heart become one heart. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. When you're double-minded, God can never be with you. You're like, should I do this? Should I do that? That person can't receive blessings. One heart happens by four-step repentance. Just because you're one heart, does that mean you meet God? No. One way. This way, John chapter 14, verse 6, is Jesus. You have to become a slave for that way to open. That's when you go toward God. So receiving Jesus, that is having Jesus inside of you, that is, that is faith. It's a gift of God, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. So Christ makes my double heart one heart, that is peace. And Jesus, he brings about reconciliation with God. That's when you meet God. So if you want to receive God's help, you have to meet him. Why can't you meet him? Because after you receive Jesus, you have to be baptized. So after believing, if you're not baptized, there is no salvation. Let's find Mark chapter 16, verse 16. You see these pastors, these elders, deacons who aren't doing well. They talk about how they get upset about this or that, or if that pleases them or not. Why is it you can't receive blessings and you don't do well? You don't receive what God gives to you meekly. 
with thanks. The smallest thing. Oh, I can't do that because that upsets me or makes me feel bad. So you're not a slave. You haven't received Jesus. So when can you receive baptism? You don't even have faith. How can you be baptized? Let's find the reason why we're not doing well. Who is it that receives baptism? You have to become a slave. So if your spouse relationship, you're both slaves, when will you fight? If To your children, to your parents, if you're a slave, why would you argue? Why do you need to complain and grumble? So if you do four-step repentance, all of that disappears. All of that disappears. When you do four-step repentance, all that disappears and you give thanks. So if your children become crazy, they have disease, your your spouse has some disease that brings about death. You know, your business doesn't do well. You see those people who don't do well if they're slaves. And yet they say, I believe in Jesus. Jesus is a slave. You haven't become a slave. When have you ever believed? If Jesus wants to come into my heart by four-step repentance, I have to die by baptism. You keep saying you're not doing well. It's you that's doing the things not to do well. So if you have problems in your house, Let's say one of your spouse, spouses or your, your your children are dying, your business isn't doing well, and yet you don't believe. You say, believe, and they're like, I believe, as if they're about to, you know, it's almost like they're about to do a poo. But you have to become a slave to believe. So you come to church, where is there a slave? These demons, whose heads are big because they've learnt a lot, just because their IQ is a bit high, you see if any of them are slaves, and you say you believe? If slaves are gathered, how can there be a faction? You'll be beaten to death. Why is it that you're not doing well? If you truly believe, Jesus has to come inside of me as a gift. If Jesus wants to come inside of me, Christ has to first be there. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. So Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17. So you first have to do forced get repentance. That's when your sins are forgiven. After your sins are forgiven, then straight away Jesus comes. So that means you become a slave. So if you have faith and you're a slave, does that mean you're baptized? No, you have to become a slave to be baptized. Mark 16 verse 16. We found that, haven't we? Let's, let's see if this is true or not. This is how you go to heaven. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved, but he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. Amen. So it's after you believe that you're baptized. So 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, you have to test to see if you have faith. Jesus Christ has to be inside of you. That faith is a gift of God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, when you do foster repentance properly, that's when Jesus comes as a gift. That is faith. But it's not enough to have faith to go to heaven. It's after believing that you have to become a slave. Just because I believe, it doesn't mean you're baptized. If you're not a slave, how many people here clean the toilets? You're nowhere near becoming a slave. So when have you been baptized? This is why your children become crazy. You have problems in your family. You ha you're, you, you're senile, you have dementia, and you can't fix it, even though God says he can be, fi he can be fixed. You've seen, in terms of medicine and science, my spine, they said, you know, something had to be put in there. But after three days, I was walking around. I was told I had to lie down. You know, my face was was paralyzed. We went to this famous hospital in, in America. We went to this specialist with a doctorate and he said, this has nothing to do with disease. Uh, Pastor Kim, you went there and he said, it's not a disease. So why, why did that happen? Because of four step repentance in order to experience this mystery. You asked that pastor, there's a photo that was taken. My hand, the marks of Jesus being nailed to the cross, two, two round circles on my hands and on the side, a scar of, of the sword being pierced to experience this, to give me this, to make me realize the incredible mystery of false state repentance. That's why it happened. It wasn't a disease. So me standing in front of you, who it works and it doesn't for you. What's the difference? How is it that Pastor Park can heal cancer, can make the demons cast out the lame to walk? How is it that you you can't even make what's yours to work out? You know, I, I repent and I say, Lord, teach me. Let me know because 
I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so weak. But you see those people who aren't baptized. What? I'm being, oh, I'm upset. I'm being mistreated. God's word. If you, if you eat this even a little bit lacking, you're, you're, you start to get mental disorders. You have to have the word of wisdom, more than 4,005 verses. So when I eat this and I give it to you, if you do this, there are workings. God helps comes. Why is it that this doesn't work for you? Why can't you cast out your diseases? Why is it that you're suffering from your problems when Almighty God says He'll help you? So God's saying, it's because they're not slaves. They say they believe. You say you believe in Jesus. Why aren't you a slave? You look at those people who don't do well, they're not a slave. You think that if you become a slave, you ruin your life. But Matthew chapter 20, verse 26 to 28, if you become a slave, you become chief. If you serve, you have the best success. You want to have success. You want you and your children to do more well. This is the only way, but you don't want to go this way. So who is it that receives baptism? You have to become a slave. So what is a slave? It's faith. So be, you don't know that faith is to become a slave. You're good at saying you believe, but have you become a slave to your spouse? Are you a slave in your family? In whatever gathering, are you a slave? If you're not a slave, when have you ever received baptism? Because you haven't received baptism, you haven't received the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't have power. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, your demons don't depart. So what is it that we found? We just read it. So let's find Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. You have to receive the Holy Spirit for demons to be cast out so that your craziness is healed, that that stroke and that that dementia is healed. You don't receive, you don't get dementia. You, you don't become crazy. How is it that you want to live? You look at some people, they seem normal. But you keep talking to them and that you see them do half crazy things. They hate their spouse. The parents hate the children. The children hate the parents. They have bad relationship with their neighbors. They're not, they're, they're not of their right mind. Why is this? Why is that divorce is increasing? There are more problems in society. Why is this? Because you're not a slave. You're not baptized. You go to a fake church. They all say they believe. But you see if there are any slaves. They all act like they're better. Faith is to be a slave. Because Jesus came as a slave. If you read in verse 8, he gave up his life. He obeyed to the point of death. That's the slave he was. If your diseases are being healed, you see them. They act like they have demons. These dog pigs who pretend they're not. God says you're a dog pig. You see how they're acting so filthily. They'll die in a filthy well. They'll go to hell. They eat up three and four generations. But can we just leave that alone? This pastor who can see that, how can I just leave that alone? We have to become a slave. We have to be baptized. Starting from casting out the demons inside of me. All those curses and dementia and craziness to cast that out. And even for our country, is this our men? This is a blessing we have to receive. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. Let's read it. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Amen. To first seek his kingdom and his righteousness. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. When does his kingdom come upon us? When you become a slave, when you're baptized, that's when the demons are cast out. So if the demons are cast out, you don't become crazy, you don't become senile, you don't get dementia. As you get older, to die in a beautiful way, to be happy, to depart that way. That's how you go to heaven. You have to believe and be baptized to go to heaven. So if you receive this blessing, then a thousand generations do well. Who is it that kills my children? It's because I'm filthy. Why is it that you don't want to become a slave? You can't become a slave of your own will. It's when you do foster repentance completely. 
If you do four step repentance completely, no matter what anyone says, no matter what anyone does, you're a slave, so you give thanks. But if you don't do four step repentance enough, you have excuses, you have conditions. That's not a slave, that's someone who isn't baptized. Because you're not baptized, you have demons. If you die, you'll go to hell. When you die, you'll end up pooing yourself, weeing yourself in a filthy way, with becoming senile, having dementia, doing crazy things before you die. Why do you want to live like that? Let's receive help. Let's become someone who's truly happy. Let's be a slave to be baptized, to cast out demons. Let's save our children and to be a patriot. Let's all receive this power. Let's all pray. Lord, our help we can only receive from the Lord. Because of our sins and our ancestors' sins, we haven't met the Lord. Please forgive us. Because we're not a slave, and yet we're mistaken to thinking that we have faith. Today, we're, may we end that. We have to become a slave to be baptized. We have to be baptized to receive the Holy Spirit, to cast out demons. It's after we receive the Holy Spirit that we receive power. What are my family problems? By this Holy Spirit, may we cast out demons. By completely doing forced at repentance, by continuously doing forced at repentance, may I live to save my family, to save my country and my people, and to save all of mankind. And now, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. From this time forth, those who want to live as a slave to be baptized on them, their families, this country, may you be with them now and forevermore. In the Lord's name I bless. Amen.